May the good Lord bless you and guide you. May the Lord protect you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we are going to read the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verses 1 to 16. The Beatitudes. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the pure, poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirsty after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for the righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye, when men shall I reveal you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his taste, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We read from verses 1 to 16, the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Then listen to the explanation of where we have read now. The Sermon on the Mount opens with the Beatitudes, eight statements beginning with the word bless. This word affirms a state of blessing that already exists. Each beatitude declares that a group of people usually regarded as afflicted is actually blessed. Those blessed do not have to do anything to attain this blessing. Jesus simply declares that they have already been blessed. Thus, the beatitudes are first of all declarations of God's grace. They are not conditions of salvation or roadmaps to end entry to God's kingdom. Those who belong to each blessed group experience God's grace because the kingdom of heaven has come near. Consider the second beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, that is Matthew 5, 4. People do not normally think of mourning as a blessing. It is a sorrow. But with the coming of the kingdom of heaven, mourning becomes a blessing because the mourners will be comforted. The implication is that God himself will do the comforting. The affliction of mourning becomes the blessing of profound relationship with God. That is a blessing indeed. Although the primary purpose of the beatitude is to declare the blessings given by God's kingdom, most of us who regard them as a painting picture of the character of that kingdom. As we step into God's kingdom, we hope to become more like those named as blessed, more meek, 
more merciful, more hungry for righteousness, more apt to make peace, and so on. This gives the Beatitudes a moral imperative. Later, when Jesus says, make disciples of all nations, that is later in the, in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19, the Beatitudes describe the character these disciples are meant to take on. The Beatitudes describe the character of God's kingdom, but they are not conditions of salvation. Jesus does not say, for example, only the pure in heart may enter the kingdom of heaven. This is good news because the Beatitudes are impossibly hard to fulfill, given that Jesus says everyone who looks at a woman with loss has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew 5.28 Who could truly be pure in heart? Matthew 5.8 Matthew 5, If it were not for God's grace, no one would actually be blessed. The Beatitudes are not a judgment against all who fail to measure up, no. Instead, they are a blessing for any who constant to join themselves to God's kingdom as it comes near. A further grace of the beatitude is that they bless God's community, not just God's individuals, by following Jesus. We become blessed members of the kingdom community, even though our character is not yet formed in God's likeness. Individually, we we'll fail to fulfill the characteristics of some or all of the blessings, but we are blessed nonetheless by the character of the entire community around us. That is, citizenship in God's kingdom begins now. The character of the kingdom begins now. Amen? The character of the kingdom community is perfected when Jesus returns, coming to the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Matthew 24, verse 30. With this understanding, we are ready to explore the character of each of the Beatitudes and explore how it applies to work we cannot attempt to discuss each beatitude, but we hope we can lay the groundwork for receiving the blessings and living out the beatitudes in our daily work. Blessed are the pure in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 3. The, pure, the poor in spirit are those who cast themselves on God's grace. We personally acknowledge our spiritual bankruptcy before God. It is the tax collector in the temple beating his breast and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Luke chapter 18 verse 9 to 14. It is an honest confession that we are sinful and utterly without moral virtues needed to please God. It is the opposite of arrogance in its deepest form. It acknowledges our desperate need for God. Jesus is declaring that it is a blessing to recognize our need to be, f to be filled by God's grace. Amen? Amen? Amen. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Verses 4. The second beautiful views on our mental recognition of our poverty of spirit by adding an emotional response of sorrow. When we face the evil in our own lives, a sudden source. When we face the evil in the world, which includes possible evil in our workplace, that too touches our emotions with grief. The evil may come from ourselves, from others, or from sources unknown. In any case, when we honestly mourn evil words, evil deeds, evil policies on the job, God sees our sorrow and comforts us with the knowledge that it will not always be this way. Hallelujah. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Verse 5. The third beatitude puzzles many people in the workplace, in part because they don't understand what it means to be meek. Many assume the term means weak, but the biblical understanding of meekness is power under control. In the Old Testament, Moses was described as the meekest man on earth. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Jesus described himself as meek and lonely. 
Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 29, which was consistent with his vigorous action in cleansing the temple. Matthew 21, 12, 13. Power under God's control means two things. One, refusal to inflate our own self-estimation. And two, returns to assert ourselves for ourselves. Paul captures the first upset perfectly in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. It says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Meek people are themselves as servants of God, not thinking more highly of themselves than they ought to think. To be meek is to accept our strengths and limitations for what they are truly are, instead of consistently trying to portray ourselves in the best possible light. Jesus is the truth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That is verse 6. Understanding the fourth beard to turns on understanding what Jesus meant by righteousness. In ancient Judaism, righteousness meant to acquit, vindicate, restore to a right relationship. The righteousness are those who maintain right relationships with God and with the people around them. On the basis of right relationships, those who commit themselves to God. Have you received the blessings of being filled with right relationship? It flows from meekness, the third beard, because we can only form right relationship with others when we cease making all our actions revolve around ourselves. May you be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.